Good afternoon to you, Mark Settle, HurricaneTrack.com. It is Wednesday, the 25th day of May 2022, and we have a possible hurricane that's going to be brewing and eventually affecting southern Mexico. I know we don't have the highest number of viewers from Mexico. That doesn't make up the majority of our demographic, but it is a hurricane impact that is probably coming up, so it's important to talk about. We're not going to ignore it just because it's not in the Atlantic Basin. Speaking of the Atlantic Basin, nothing going on over the next 48 hours, and the same is true over the next five days. But if we move over to the Eastern Pacific, we do have this one area right here, south of the southern portions of Pacific side Mexico, that looks like it's well on its way to becoming our first name storm, and when it does so, it'll be Agatha. And I do believe we're gonna see some impacts somewhere in this vicinity over the next five days or so, a prob uh, probably a very significant hurricane. And so we got to talk about it, make sure people are aware. This other area, not to worry about it at all. It won't develop. It is insignificant, so we will leave it at that. So the satellite animation this afternoon, give you an idea of what's happening out there. Uh, this is the one area that's about 20% development, development chances. We just won't, won't even pay any mind to it any longer. This is the next feature that's trying to get its act together. It's slowly doing so. Part of this sort of monsoon trough that's sitting out here, um, almost like a grapevine for low pressure to consolidate. And when they do so, you get these tropical cyclones. You can also see some strong upper level winds cutting across out of the Eastern Pacific, across Mexico, another band right here, and lots of southwesterly flow in the tropical Atlantic. And then, a mid-latitude cyclone uh, over Oklahoma here, probably kind of dreary, a little bit cool weather out here relative to where we're used to seeing. It can be 100 degrees this time of year, and it has been recently out that way, but not today. We do have some strong thunderstorms, a, a big line of them moving across the Gulf. So the oil platforms out there, they're, uh, manned or unmanned, you're going to be dealing with some squally weather. And then you can't really see it here at all. Uh, that's why I'm going to zoom in and show you in a minute. But there's an interesting little feature right down here that I'm going to uh, show you from the Weather Nerds website. And let's do that now. This is a GIF animation. Look at that. Not too far from Tampico. Uh, a little swirly down there. Naked swirl. Uh, no convection with it. All low clouds. You can see the upper level winds just screaming over the top of it. If it were later in the season and we had a lot less shear, this could be one of those very small geographically aerial, you know, the aerial coverage of it, small tropical cyclone if it had a little bit more, oh, a lot more convection, but um, thought I'd point that out to you. Also, this is a good lesson when you see a big line of storms like this coming out into the Gulf and you say, oh, look at those clouds and storms, maybe that'll develop into something. There are a lot of clues in this satellite animation that'll tell you that other complex up there, that's not going to do anything. And the biggest clue is the air rushing away. Tropical cyclones need the air to come in and converge. Convergence at the low levels is a very, very big part of it. You need the air to pile up and go upward to create thunderstorms. There are some thunderstorms there, but the air at the low levels is rushing away. And that's why I get that little line right there, those shelf clouds that come out. Right there, that's the air, the rain-cooled air comes down, it's heavy, and it creates that outflow boundary. Uh, nice shelf cloud probably out there. Anybody out there on all platforms from, what is it, Pemex, I think, something like that, the Mexican oil industry. Uh, lots of platforms out there. Maybe you guys got some good pictures of some shelf clouds coming off of some of these thunderstorm complexes as they move across the Gulf. But that is a sign that you're not going to get development. Plus, it's, it's linear. See, it's all in a line. It's not consolidated and trying to bundle up and uh, become anything to worry about tropically, so to speak. All right, um, vorticity, a good indicator of where we are when we look for trouble, so to speak. And there's nothing out here in the main development region anywhere. These are our mid-latitude areas of low pressure and vorticity in and around either over the ocean here. There's a front right there. And all this spin in the atmosphere, the vorticity, the energy, a little tiny piece in eastern North Carolina. It might try to trigger some thunderstorms later today. We'll see about that. Uh, but nothing really to speak of in the Atlantic Basin at all. Just a little bit of energy here in the Gulf of Mexico. 
but it's at the low end of the scale, so there's just not much there. Where we do have something, this is the 20% area, we won't worry about that, but this is the high chance area of development, and watch over the coming days as this consolidates. We talk about this every year, but maybe you're new to the channel here on YouTube or watching on Facebook or wherever the, the case may be, and you'll see that I reference these vorticity charts a lot because this really tells us what's going on, sort of seeing through the clouds and what the structure is. And this is a satellite product that comes from the University of Wisconsin. And we're looking to see if these areas consolidate, become more round in nature when they are oblong and kind of amorphous in shape like this or like that or linear like this. That's not the makings of a tropical cyclone at all. Not going to happen. That is what you look for there. And you see if it persists and gets more concentrated, more of the uh, oranges, reds, and eventually the whites. And what does all that mean, the science behind it? Well, that's a whole other lesson. The conservation of angular momentum and how you explain relative vorticity. And then you get into some deep meteorology that, I don't know, I don't think it's, um, I don't want to say it's boring, but let's just look at, hey, does it fit the profile? And in this particular situation, we can use this map to see, does the vorticity shape the colors and everything? It's just real easy to understand this type of map product from the University of Wisconsin when we keep it simple and leave the advanced meteorology out of it. But it is a vorticity signature map. That's what we're looking for. It's a little, you know, not amorphous, but it's getting there. Watch how round it is and how the spin or the vorticity will increase. And you'll see these colors over here start to amplify in this over the coming days. A really neat tool where we can monitor things. All right. What does it have going for it uh, in the East Pack? Yes, there's a lot of attention focused on the Atlantic. We're supposed to have a very busy season, but in the Atlantic. Uh, but the East Pacific already has some pretty good ocean heat content out there. That's what this shows, the upper ocean heat content, or the TCHP. See, that's what it says over here, TCHP, tropical cyclone heat potential. Different ways you can look at it. Uh, but this area where our system is going to try to develop there is plenty of upper ocean heat content, i.e. the Pacific is warm enough. And what that means, again, you may already know this, and if so, tap, tap to go fast forward through it or whatever, that's fine. But if you don't know, let me explain briefly. The ocean, we know it needs to be around 80 degrees Fahrenheit at the surface. But the deeper that 80 degree line, we call that the isotherm, lines of equal temperature, the deeper that 80 degrees is into the water, the water column, the more upper ocean heat content there is so that when you blow the wind across or you turn it up in any other fashion, you're turning up more 80 plus degree water. You understand? So it's not just at the surface. It's like your cup of coffee. When you get it, you know, it's a small column of coffee and liquid. The whole thing is really darn hot. You blow across the surface of it to cool it off so it doesn't burn your lips. And that is what happens with these tropical cyclones. They blow across the ocean. They cool off the surface through a bunch of different mechanisms. And if there's more warm water to replace it through upwelling and just churning, that indicates high upper ocean heat content values. The deeper that warm water is and the warmer that water column is at depth makes a big uh, difference here. And that's what these different colors show. Again, we start getting into thermodynamics and physics and whatever. We don't have time for that here. The bottom line is it is a thematic map. It shows a theme and the theme here, the, the legend is your uh, energy level in the upper ocean heat content of the Pacific in this case. So right off the coast of Mexico, there's enough that you can get some pretty intense hurricanes there. Even when the Atlantic is forecast to be very busy, that doesn't mean the Pacific won't produce anything because believe me it will so let's see what it's up to this is the gfs there's that 850 millibar level of the atmosphere that's about 5,000 feet up look the trades are blowing all the way through got some good ridging out here over the western atlantic uh, let's use the color black that'll help it pop a little better trades blowing through there's the ridge here over the western atlantic repeating myself but it helps when you can see it better uh, but over here in the eastern pacific the trades slow. We got this monsoon trough over here 
and the air is converging, coming in from the Caribbean side over Central America. It's piling up, and you get this little piece of energy right in here. That's the area to watch as we put this into motion. Over the next few days, watch what happens. 24 hours, 48. You can see it, plain as day, starting to come together. Look, the wind barbs down there. They're coming in from the west. They're still coming in from the east over here. That's helping to create this convergence down here where the air piles up. Thunderstorms ensue. The condensation process releases heat. And we're off to the races by 72 hours. GFS indicating a pretty good consolidation by the weekend. Saturday morning should get up and be on the ver uh, the basically virtually. What am I trying? The verge. That's the word I'm looking for. The guy in my brain uh, so quickly trying to find the right word. We will be on the verge of a tropical depression forming, and then by 96 hours, it could be a hurricane if the GFS is right. We'll see. GFS is kind of been leading us astray lately, so we'll have to see about that. Nevertheless, though, by day five and then day six, it looks like it's going to head towards Mexico somewhere, uh, and that's important. People live down here. Again, I know a lot of the focus is on the Atlantic Basin side, and most of the people that watch these videos live there, but we do have people that watch from southern Mexico as well. You might know somebody down there, and you can send this to them, and maybe through Google Translate, it can pop it into Spanish for you or through the subtitles that YouTube provides. Yeah, the world isn't all horrible. We can do stuff like that and help out our fellow neighbors down here to get the word out. That's the area. Could have some heavy rain in the mountains, uh, mudslides, flash flooding, and at the coast, of course, your hurricane conditions. This is still several days away. We'll have to wait and see how it pans out, but it does look really likely that this is going to be a threat for our friends in southern Mexico. The European ECMWF, same area, 850 millibars, 5,000 feet up. Every 24 hours we get on this particular map set, there's 48, 72, 96, 120, and then finally 144. The same general idea as a GFS at day 4, 5, and 6, not too far from each other. That's pretty good agreement right there. So again, you folks down here in southern Mexico, what is that near... Uh, Oaxaca, I think, is the state area, whatever you guys call it. Um, i got to learn my Mexican geography, but I think it's the Oaxaca area in that part of Mexico. you got to be paying attention. Sorry, somebody was texting me. I had to ignore it. Um, possible hurricane coming. You know, Tell your friends, your neighbors down there, you, you, people that have business interests, whatever. It is hurricane season, and something does look to be coming for that area next week and we'll certainly talk about it each day as things progress also severe weather season still in full swing right now though the rockies and the plains uh pretty much free and clear look at that one little area just general garden variety thunderstorm activity some convective activity we'll say way up in the border area of southern canada and uh north dakota Slight risk and even some heavy rain threat, very heavy rain possible for parts of the Gulf Coast, and a slight risk up here um, in northern Illinois, Indiana, and southern part of Lake Michigan. So just keep your eyes on all of that. The tornado threat, again, not zero, but not real high either. You never know. Wind threat, yeah, enough to take very seriously. And hey, look, not too much of a hail issue today. So your roof, your car, your glass, whatever. Your nice bushes, trees, plants, roses, they're all going to be intact. Tomorrow, um, an interesting slight risk up here in kind of an unusual area as a little piece of energy starts to drop in. A slight risk of severe weather in parts of the Ohio Valley region. And again, the tornado threat, not zero, 2%. I bet this changes, of course, each day as more data comes in. The wind threat tomorrow and the hail threat tomorrow. Just keeping you aware. Everything going on in the world, you got to also focus on the weather so it doesn't surprise you. Then finally, day three, this will be towards the weekend. I guess this would be Saturday. Yeah, Wednesday, Thursday. This would be Friday, sorry. Day one's always today. i got to remember that. Um, all these years, and it's hard to keep up with. So by Friday, a severe risk. Let's just call it the I-95 corridor, uh, plus or minus 75 to 100 miles through you know, either side of that corridor, so keep your eyes peeled 
to updates related to that going forward. And then finally, days four through eight, the high planes, uh, yep. And then six, seven, and eight, predictability too low. I'm still waiting for something that looks about like this for a severe threat. And then I'm going to head back out there. I bet it's coming. We still have a few weeks before everything really does shift up here. And then you start also looking for the desert monsoon to set up much later down the road. But yeah, I got my eyes peeled for when SPC highlights something about like that. Um, and then I'm going to try to get back out there. We got a couple things we want to try. And I just love it out there. It's beautiful and the weather's interesting. So why not enjoy it and learn something from it at the same time? All right, just reminding you, here's our social media stuff, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. And then June 1st, next week, we're going to start this 90 seconds or less. What's up in the tropics with yours truly, Mark Suttoth, every morning. And it'll be in audio and video format. Just a real quick summary. What am I thinking? What's up out there? What's happening? How do, you, how do I see the day progressing in the world of the tropics? And uh, then later on in the day, I'll do the Hurricane Outlook and discussion. And we'll throw that on YouTube and Facebook. And of course, we're supported on Patreon, our crowdfunding source. If you don't know about it, check it out. Patreon.com slash hurricane track. All right, so you folks down in Mexico, be thinking about it, getting ready, whatever it is that you got to do down there to be ready for this. I've been to Mexico once last year for Pamela. That was near Mazatlan. This is a different area of Mexico, so seriously, tell your friends, colleagues, family members, whatever. Um, yeah, hurricane threat possibly coming in the next week or so, probably less than a week out between five and six days. And as I said, we'll talk about it more in the next several days to make sure you are aware of the latest. All right, that's it from me for today. Have a great rest of your Wednesday afternoon. As always, thanks for tuning in. I'm Mark Suttoth for Hurricane Track. We'll talk again some more tomorrow.